excuse me, I-Y-A-R. The third is Savan, S-I-V. A N. The fourth is Tammuz, which is T A M M U Z. Uh, the next is Av, A V. The next is Elul, A E L U L. The seventh month would with, with be Tishri. It is T I S H. Uh, T-I-S-H-R-E-I, get the CD. Uh, the eighth is Sheshvan, which is C-H-E-S-V-A-N. Ninth, Keslev, K-I-S-L-E-V. The next, Tevet, T-E-V-E-T. Uh, Eleven, Shavat, S-H-E-V-A-T. And finally, the twelfth month, Adar, A-D-A-R. Now, uh, you got that, right? All right, good. All right. Now, watch this. Now, the Hebrew calendar has four different starts to the calendar depending on the purpose. But the civil year, which is when the number of the year changes, is Rosh Hashanah, which is today. It literally started one hour ago. It started at sundown. We went from the year 5774 to 5775. What I love about it is that, watch this, built into God's calendar is automatically four new starts every year, which essentially communicates this concept to us that God says, I'm constantly offering you an opportunity to have a new beginning. I don't wait until December 31 to declare that things can be fresh for you, baby. You could have had a messed up last month, and God says, I'm constantly trying to give you a way to restart. And I don't know about you, but I used to play, I, I used to play video games when I was a little kid, and sometimes you play video game please understand sometimes the game would freeze up on you and sometimes you needed to hit the reset button to just go all the way back to the beginning because what was going on was you weren't able to progress any longer you know hear what I'm saying sometimes you just needed to have a fresh start in a new beginning to reset touch your neighbor say this is my reset uh, watch this. In other words, God builds into the calendar automatic do-overs. God says, I, I put in there automatic do-overs. It's in his concept. It's in his nature. Now, the word feast, say feast. It literally means, I taught a little bit about this this weekend, and, and we're going to cover it uh, a, a little bit tonight, and, and I definitely encourage you to get, I've done a lot of teaching on it before to get that. The word feast in our Bible means appointed time. Say appointed, appointed. times. Uh, now watch this. That would be Hebrew. In the Greek, they would call it a kairos moment. It is now when heaven invades earth. It is almost as if time itself stops uh, quanti quantitatively so that time qualitatively can enter. It is almost now uh, just like when Joshua prayed and told the sun to stand still and the sun stood still while he had vengeance on his enemies. That was an appointed time. That was a kairos moment. In other words, watch this. God says, I've built in to the calendar seven major feasts say seven. seven seven major feasts now that are appointed times or kairos moments when heaven is going to invade earth watch this it, it they are called holy convocations which is a meeting between God and men watch this here's the difference God sets the meeting your prayer, your praise, and your worship sets an appointment with God but a feast is an appointment that God sets with you I'm going to say it again because you missed it. Your prayer, your praise, and your worship will set an appointment with God. But a feast or an appointed time or a kairos moment, it is an appointment that God sets with you. It's a big deal when the owner wants to meet with you. It's one thing when you want to meet with the owner. It's a whole nother situation when the owner says, I got something I want to discuss with you. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. The concept was very simple. If you missed your appointment, another one wasn't scheduled until the next feast. It's very simple. God says, you show up on my calendar when I tell you to show up, how I tell you to show up, and then everything's good. You don't, well, then that's on you because I'm not, I'm not scheduling another meeting with you until the next feast. Which is why it's such a shame that some folk heard me this weekend and thought I was suggesting that they were here this on Wednesday. They missed an appointment that God, okay. <laughs> Touch the neighbor say, but I didn't miss mine. Touch the I didn't miss mine. So didn't, did not miss my baby. I've been through too much hell to play with God. I got too much. I'm trying to see manifest in my life to play with God. Church ain't something I go to. Baby, I am the church. When I step on the sea, he is my life. That's why they used to sing. He is the source of my strength and he is the strength of my life. Touch your neighbor and say, he's my everything. Watch this. There are now seven major feasts. Now, all of the feasts point to Christ as the Messiah or for the Jew, the Moshiach, as a way for the Jews to believe and to fulfill all things prophesied. Let me make that very clear. 
In the Old Testament, which really man created Old Testament, New Testament, uh, those aren't different covenants. Those are different testaments which man created. There were now seven major covenants of Scripture. Now, one of them is called Old. When people refer to the Old Covenant, because in one passage of Scripture in Hebrews, the Mosaic Covenant or Torah is called the Old Covenant to make a distinction between the Renewed Covenant and the Covenant of Torah. The Covenant of Torah said you had 613 mitzvah or laws that you had to keep. And if you could not keep them, then you were guilty of the in, breaking the entire law. Now, please understand, when Jesus came, he was perfect. You know why he was perfect? He was perfect because he had to not just keep the Ten Commandments, no. He had to keep the 613 mitzvah. Which means when, what I says, which means Jesus, he was 100% perfect according to the letter of the law. And he did something that you and I would never be able to do. You don't understand what I'm saying. That, that, that is the reason why I get to rest in Jesus because I'm resting in what he did because I know I would have no ability to do it. You're still trying to love your neighbor. Imagine trying to keep up with 613 different rules and regulations. So watch this now. Watch this. Y'all still here. Uh, so now watch this. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, you saw many patterns that would point to the coming of Jesus the Christ, the Theanthropos, the God-man. So much man you could not believe he was God. So much God you could not believe he was man. He was literally Emmanuel. He was God wrapped in a body. Son of a man means he was born of a woman. Son of God means he was God in the flesh. Are you still here? So now watch this. When we see this type and pattern. So the feasts, the seven major feasts are established in the Old Testament that point to Jesus and reveal Jesus in the New Testament. Now watch this. Since the feasts are fulfilled in the Messiah or Jesus the Christ, anyone that is in Christ is presented with the same opportunity that a Hebrew or a Jewish person would be presented with to have an appointment or a meeting with God. That's all I'm trying to get you to understand. Which means the blessing of the feast don't just apply to the Hebrew. Hebrews, but to anybody that's in Christ. Now, say seven. Seven is the biblical number of completion. So we see this picture of entering into God's rest. What is God's rest? It is another word God uses called shalom, which means nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking, all is well. They call it peace. So watch this now. When we see seven, what we're really seeing is the rest of God. Watch this, or the peace of God. So now with this particular feast that we're in, uh, as, I, as I reveal this to you tonight, I need you to see that God set this up so that if you follow his schedule and follow his calendar, you wouldn't lack peace. T touch your neighbor and say, I will never lack peace. Another day of my life. Now, we just use never, and I'm not a fan of using never, but God makes this promise on his own. Y'all not hear what so, so, so just for the sake of the atmosphere, let's just go on and modify it. Say, touch your neighbor. Say, it is not my plan <laughs> to lack peace <laughs> another day of my life. All right, watch this now. There were four spring feasts, four spring feasts. And I'm going to move expeditiously through these. So get the CD. And look at God. I call it a CD. Four spring feasts. It's been a tape for the last eight years. All right, Passover. Uh, say, Passover. This was now the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Please understand, it is literally where the blood of a lamb would be shed and it was applied at the doorpost. Uh, we saw this when the children of Israel were coming. They were making the exodus out of Egypt and they were supposed to take an 11-day journey into their promised land that ended up taking them 40 years. In fact, it could have taken less than 11 days. God said he didn't take them the way of war because he knew that they were too scared to fight. Are there some things that God says, you could have actually had that last year. I just knew you weren't going to fight for it. Uh, please understand, everybody wants to be great, but not everybody wants to fake, face great battles. Please understand, if you're going to be a king, you're going to have to face the battles that a king faces. If you're going to be, if you're going to be, watch this, an eagle, you're going to have to deal with the level of issues that the eagle deals with. If you want to be a CEO, you're going to have to deal with the level of issue the CEO deals with. You know the purpose of the CEO to deal with the problems that everybody under him could not fix. Now, now watch this. Watch, watch this and touch your neighbor and say, I can fight. Tell, tell him, say, there's a fighter in me. Uh, so watch this now. Watch, watch this. God, he could have took them a shorter way. They didn't go that way because he said he knew they were, they were going to be scared to fight. So when they came out of Egypt, it was during the Passover. Say the Passover. Now, please understand, uh, them applying the blood of a spotless lamb. Please understand, that's why Jesus was perfect, which means he was spotless. He had no blemish. Say he was perfect. He was spotless. So now watch this. When his blood, watch it, in the Old Testament, they would have applied the blood to the doorpost. Watch this. In the New Testament, his blood went on a wooden cross. 
Well, the doorpost in the Old Testament would have been wooden, so his blood was shed on the new, uh, in the new Testament on a wooden cross. So now it is the same exact thing happening, only now there didn't need to be another sacrifice made because Jesus would be the last sacrifice that would ever have to be made, which means the reason we don't sacrifice animals, lambs, and goats, etc. today is because when Jesus said, it is finished, his blood paid the final price forever. And I think there's some witnesses in here that are thankful for that blood. It reaches to the highest mountain, but it goes to the lowest valley. The blood washes you, sins away. Would you touch your neighbor and say, I'm blood washed? Yes, I am. Baby, I'm not here because I'm perfect. I'm not here because I do everything right. I'm in here because I'm bloody. Yes, I am. I got the blood of Jesus on over my life and every time I make a mistake his blood comes and washes it away and what touch your neighbor say I'm bloody baby yes I am be seated watch it so now no death could come near the dwelling of your uh, uh, your person's dwelling if the blood of the lamb was applied at the doorpost watch this which means the death angel when he was coming to visit houses if he saw the blood notice it was the death angel If I had time, I'd work that like a part-time job. It was the death angel, not the devil. Not a demon. It was the death angel, which means it's some stuff God says, I'll kill it if you won't. Okay, yeah, 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 I don't want to say nothing to me. So watch this now, watch this. So the death angel, when he saw the blood, he had to keep it moving. Which is the reason why after all the hell you've been through, and you should be dead and you should be in an insane asylum somewhere the death angel looked at your life but he saw the blood somebody shout thank you for the blood that's why you're still standing that's why you're still in your right mind that's why you keep bouncing back over and over and over again because of the blood be seated watch this so no death could come nigh thy dwelling. Now watch this. That was Passover. So the death angel, when he saw the blood on the doorpost, and for you and I, it's our lives. When he sees it, he has to pass over. Hence the feast of Passover. Now, following that would be the feast of unleavened bread. The feast of unleavened bread. We're talking about the first four that are in springtime. Now watch this. Leaven had to be removed from the homes of God's people. Now, uh, leaven uh, for uh, uh, cooking and bread, etc., uh, would, 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 if you put, think of it like this. Let me give you this example. If you put a little yeast in bread, what's going to happen? So what happens is the scripture says in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they could not eat any bread that had leaven or that had risen. Watch this or had yeast in the analogy we use. Watch this. Because leaven had a spiritual meaning. It meant evil or error. So God made them remove it literally so they would be able to do it spiritually. Sometimes there's stuff I have you do in church, like I'll say take a step or do this and do that, because I need you to see yourself do it literally so you'll be able to do it spiritually. What was wrong with them eating yeast in the bread? Nothing. God said, but I just need you to see what it looks like for you to do that in the spirit. So in other words, he said, I need you to remove your evil. I need you to remove your error. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, 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 now watch this, watch this. Because Jesus was perfect, spotless, without blemish, this also meant he had no leaven. He had no evil. And he had no error. Everything he did was right. And if it wasn't right when he did it, it became right because he is. That's why the scripture says God can't lie. You know why he can't lie? Because if he says that something is, it becomes whatever he says it is. So it's very clear your shirt is yellow, son. But please understand, if God says it's blue, your shirt will then become blue. Or blue will now be called blue. What yellow was will now be called blue. God says, I can't lie. Whatever I say, it is. So if I just declare that this is that, then this is that. If that is this, then that is this because I cannot lie, which means I don't say that it's different than what it is. When I say that it's something different, it becomes what I said it is. 
Now, watch this. Jesus had no leaven. He had no error. He had no evil. <laughs> now, this is why, watch this, Jesus' body did not decay. He got up before his body would have had an opportunity to decay, and he was sanctified or set apart. Watch this. Because there was no evil or leaven in him. Watch this. Now, following the Feast of Passover, only unleavened bread could be eaten seven days following Passover. Now, th this simply represented getting evil and error out of your life. Got it? Now, this, uh, 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 well, I don't have time to deal with that. We'll, we'll, we'll do that another time. All right? Well, maybe not. Who, who, who died during the time Jesus, uh, well, after he's crucified? Judas. Passover. He became the, the sacrifice. He became the lamb. And following the death of Jesus, evil had to die. Th 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 that's why if you look around the time of Passover, which, which the next feast I'm getting ready to get up today, Jesus got it, which will be around Easter. If you look around that time in your life, it'll be some stuff that will just die. Think back to Easter this year. Think around them few weeks before, them few weeks after. There's some stuff that just Stone Cold Steve Austin just... Because God said, watch this, I got an appointment with you. And if they ain't for you, they got to go. All right, let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. <laughs> let me leave that alone. So, so the third one would be the Feast of First Fruits. So we got Passover. That would be Christ's crucifixion. Unleavened bread, he was the unleavened bread. And evil had to be put away. <laughs> oh, man, I wish I could work that evil and put away thing. Okay. Then the third was the Feast of what? What is it? All right. This would be what we call in, in Gregorian calendar, we call it Easter, which is really man-made. Uh, Resurrection Sunday, but really the appropriate name is the Feast of First Fruits. It is Christ's resurrection. Got it? And I've taught on this before. Jesus didn't die on Friday. People say, good Friday. They just can't count. That's a shame. The whole doggone church of Jesus Christ can't count. Talking about on Friday, wasn't it bad? <laughs> and all day Saturday, but ah, one Sunday morning. You can't count. That ain't no enough time. Three days and three nights ain't Friday to Sunday morning. Because it was Passover. It was, it, well, uh, I'll leave that alone. Uh, all right, watch this. Say first fruit. And watch this. The first fruit. Uh, let me take it to giving so you get the concept. The first fruit says this. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Stick that up. Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10 so you can see this. The principle of the first fruit says this. That, Proverbs 3, 9, here we go. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the what? First fruits of your, all your increase. Now, look at me. The principle of first fruit says this. I wanted you to see a tree. Everybody see this tree? Okay, wonderful. It's a beautiful tree. Wonderful tree. Now, here's the deal. It's an apple tree. Say it's an apple tree. Anybody like apples? All right, Granny Smith, Red Delicious. Them other ones that I don't quite know what the name is, but they're kind of ready, greeny. <laughs> Fuji? Who? Gala? Okay, all right. All right. How, how many cheapest bag? Cheapest bag? Cheapest bag? Any cheapest bag? People, come on, be honest. You know you get the cheapest bag I have. It's four, five, four dollars. No, get them. Better no five dollars on no <laughs> apples. Ain't even gonna eat them. <laughs> Everybody see the tree? It's an apple tree, whatever your apple is, whether it's the cheapest bag or red delicious or whatever. Now, here's the principle of first fruits. It's a biblical principle. The principle of first fruit says that first apple that falls off the tree, God says, if that first one is holy or distinct, or if it's sanctified, or if it's blessed, because it's the first fruit, by default, every other apple fall off this tree is the same as the first fruit. 
So when Jesus got up on the feast of first fruits, he was a guarantee that the rest of the harvest call you and I. If he's blessed, if he's the head and not the tail, because if the first fruit is, then all of the harvest is. Be seated, watch this. If the first fruit is, then all the harvest is. But the first fruit was also, not only did it sanctify uh, the rest of the harvest and make the rest of the harvest the same as it, but it also, watch this, was a guarantee for the remainder of the crop. That's why Jesus, uh, the apostle Paul makes a statement like this. He says, for little is the will of God that all men would be saved. Why does he say that? Because we know that since Christ was the first fruit, that Christ then desires that everybody that would come, uh, subsequent him, would know him. Why? Because he's a guarantee that the rest is going to be harvested. Which means you got some family. I'm going to help somebody that you've been praying for for years. <laughs> and it don't look like they're ever going to get their act together. I got news for you, baby. They don't have a say in a matter. Because the first fruit got up. And since he got up, it's only a matter of time before the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout Holy Ghost. <laughs> It's only a matter of time for the Holy Ghost throws the reel and says, come here, boy. You ain't finna act like that no more. Come here, little girl. Get up out of that bed. Come up out of that club. Put that pipe down. He's going to ensure that they have an opportunity to be introduced to him. That's how you got here. You didn't pick him. He picked you. The first fruit said, I got up. Now you get up. The first fruit says, I'm holy. Now you be holy. The so watch now. We had the feast of Passover, the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of first fruits. Now, here's the fourth one. That's the spring one. Then we're going to get to the fall ones, and we'll get to where we're at tonight. Uh, the, the, ne the last one of the spring ones was the feast of weeks. Feast of weeks. Now, you might be saying, Bishop, I've never heard this stuff. Exactly. Because cause what, what happened is, is the Roman Catholic Church, when they, when they hijacked Christianity uh, some 2,000 years ago, uh, Rome, Catholic just means universal, so it became the Roman universalism, and, 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 and there were some good things that came from that, cause, cause, because they're, they're, they, they decided that they needed to have one leader, you can't have all these 15 different leaders and all this, is crazy. so there were some good things that came out of that. What also happened, though, is, is that in an effort to break itself from Judaism, some, some of the very tenets and the foundational principles that the early Christians practiced some of those things got lost because Christianity tried to have its own identity. Parents, it's just like your children who the truth is they used to sit up, lay in your bed, not because they're 13 years old. Now they tell my mama, don't be coming up to the school and walking all in front of you and all this. Well, it wasn't like that a little bit ago. But now they're trying to have their own identity. That's why some of you need to just learn how to, you need to learn how to love your kids. Show them, this is what you mean. When they say, mama, don't come up in my school, you need to show up in your rollers and show up in your house coat and just scoot on in there. Just scoot on in Now, what's what my boy doing? Now, I'm joking. Don't do that to your, the whole student section just got completely silent. Do not do that to your, to your young people. Don't do that. Do not, do, no, no yeses. Do not do that. But all I'm saying is if they start tripping, S sometimes you have to meet the level of foolishness. So since you thought you was going to buck me, I, 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 I hope I don't make nobody mad, but I guess I ain't really cared for years. So uh, if you're going to act this level of fool, then I'm going to have to meet that level of foolishness with this level of discipline because They cussed you out and you gave them time out. That's not the match. That don't match. That don't match. You still don't know where they're at. And you just sitting here talking, oh, I love it. All right, let me leave it alone. Uh, yeah. What's this? What's this? <laughs> huh. All right. What's this? So the point I was trying to make, though, the point I was trying to make, no, love your kids, treat them right. So don't be two different people at church and at home. That's, see, see, some parents think, oh, you know, this is funny when people think, oh, my kids are at church a lot. No, they like church. What they don't like is the two different yous. 
Now, students, y'all better help me. Don't leave me out here. It's one you at church, and then it's another you in the car. And their issue is, is they think them two different people is how God is. And so they don't trust God because they think he's double-minded and two-faced it like you. See, equal opportunity. I got both sides. Now, watch this. Say Feast of Weeks. I wasn't trying to even talk about that. I, I, what I was trying to say is Christianity some, it, it tried to have its own identity. So some of the very fundamental things that were quintessential and germane to the Christian experience, amen, amen, that were germane to the Christian experience uh, sometimes got a little lost in translation. Now watch this. The Feast of Weeks is also known as the Feast of Shavuot. S-H-A-V-O-U-T, Shavuot. It is also known as the Feast of Harvest. Our namesake, Harvest. It is also known as, you know this one, the day of Pentecost. Pente, the prefix meaning five, five, oh, 50. Now, the Feast of Weeks, it was a festive time when people from different countries would come to Jerusalem. And it was a celebration. Say celebration. That's why the Pentecostal or charismatic expression of Christianity uh, charismatic just means believing in the gifts of the Spirit, Pentecostal, believing in the baptism of the Spirit. It, uh, please understand, that's why it's very celebratory. Please understand, uh, we, we, we are a non-denominational church, but, but we are a church that believes in the gifts and in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's why some of you maybe came from churches where you just sat and... And hey, if that's you, hey, you know, praise the Lord. But I'm charismatic. <laughs> and that don't mean, because some people think that means, oh, you know, he's just being very persuasive when he speaks. No. No. Charismata, uh, it just deals with the gifts and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which means we, because the Bible teaches us, he lives in us, he works through us. He lives in us, that's his baptism. He works through us, those his gifts. See, everybody understand that? All right, now, watch this. So on the day of Pentecost, you know this, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place and with one accord. And then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind that filled the house that they were sitting in. And then there appealed unto them cloven tongues of fire that sat on each of them. Watch this. The day of Pentecost was 50 days after when we dealt with the previous feast. Now, watch this. The Holy Spirit, when we look at this in the Bible, in Acts chapter 2, that day of Pentecost. So go to Acts 1.8. Acts 1, or excuse me, Acts 2.8. Go to Acts 2.8 real quick. Uh, actually, no, go to Acts 1.8. We'll, we'll start there real quick. Just so you can see this. All right. All right. There it is. Let's read it. One, two, ready, read. Stop. Power, that word means dunamis. It means miracle working power. It means it's a miracle that the power exists in the first place. It's a miracle that God says, I want to live in you when I could live anywhere. But you shall receive... Come on, Harvest. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you or has baptized you, and you shall be witnesses. And then he tells you why he gave it to you. So a lot of people get filled with the Spirit, and then really all that filling with the Spirit is, is they just talking a bunch of tongues, but, they, but, they, but, but, but they're gossips, and they're mean, and they're rude. So the Holy Ghost don't actually run. He's, he doesn't actually lead them. So, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and, and, and to the ends of the earth. So in your, in your town, in your city, in your region, the country, so on and so forth. Here, here, here's the deal. The Holy Spirit in the upper room, which is where all of this happened. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all remember if you came up in church in the upper room. Anybody remember that old song? In, if I had time, I sure would, but I ain't got time. Uh, watch this. Uh, now, a lot of people think, well, that's when the Holy Spirit came. Not true. The Lord had already released the <laughs> Ruach. The Holy Ghost is not some little, little Jesus and, and God's like little bro brother. Not so. There is one God. Deuteronomy 6, 4, here is of the Lord our God is one. He is one God that it, over time has manifested itself as father. Then he manifested himself as his son. Then he manifested himself as his <laughs> as his ruach. What's his ruach? His essence. Anybody ever walked out of the room and you still smelt their essence? Uh-huh. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? It's as if they're still in the room with you. Yeah. You ever had somebody give you a hug and the whole night you had their essence on you? 
Don't act like that. So it is, the, it is the Ruach, it is the breath of God. That's the Holy Spirit. He's not some other third guy. There's not people who pray, oh, I pray to the Holy Spirit. That's not the way Jesus said to pray. You're out of order, you're out of line. You're, okay, it's just out of order, you're out of line. No matter how he said pray, pray the way he said pray. Now, watch this. Watch this. Uh, in, in Acts, the apostles, when they went up there, John 20 teaches us that Jesus had already given them the gift of his essence, of his Ruach of the parakletos in the Greek. The helper. Some of you know about the helper because there were some situations where you were getting ready to go plumb crazy, but the helper... <laughs> Why the folk that's thankful for the helper? Why the folk that say, Jesus, I was going to act crazy over that, but the... <laughs> the Holy Ghost just... <laughs> So watch this now. Be seated. Watch this now. So watch this. The Holy Spirit had already baptized the leadership, the apostles. And so on the day of Pentecost, he baptized the fellowship, if you will, um, because the leadership needed to have it before the fellowship could have it. Got fellowship is a harvest word. It means followers. Feast of weeks, Shavuot, day of Pentecost. Everybody got it? Now, there are three fall feasts. Three fall feasts. Y'all still with me? All right, here we go. The first is called the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah, which is, we've been in it now for a, a little over an hour. Now, I'm going to come back to this one last because that's where we are today. So I just want you to have it so for my note takers, you can have it in the place in your notes. I'm going to come back to this one last, but I want to go ahead and move to the last two, and then we're going to come back to the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah. All right? So the next one is called the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur or depending on where you're from, Yom Kippur. <laughs> Note takers, Yom, Y-O-M-K-I-P-P-U-R, two separate words. Now, um, the Day of Atonement uh, is a very interesting day because essentially what God said, the new year started. The civil year started. Remember, there are four different starts of the Hebrew calendar. The civil year started at Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, where trumpets here is just the best translation they had for the ram's horn. They, they weren't blowing trumpets. They were blowing the ram's horn. There was a time in Scripture where they blew trumpets, but that was to celebrate a new moon. Okay? Uh, 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 the, the resetting of the sun and the moon. All right. Now, 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 now watch this. Say Day of Atonement. All right, now, I want, I want you to uh, look at one scripture, Leviticus 23 and 26. Because the Day of Atonement is coming up. I'll teach on it. Uh, I will do my best endeavor to get a little bit into that um, uh, coming up. Um, I'll do my best to get there. But if not, you just got to go get the teachings I've already done on it. Now, say Day of Atonement. Day of Atonement. Here, here was the essence. God said, when the new year sounds, I want you to spend the first part of that year fixing what messed up your last one. So what the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur was about, it, it literally means this. It means it is the time of Teshuvah in Hebrew. No takers. T-E-S-H-U-V-A in Hebrew. Real simple. It means repenting and returning. Repenting and returning. Repenting and returning. So what happened during this time of this Day of Atonement, what happened is, is that God said he, he, he wanted them to have a time where they put to end all feuds. They put to end all disputes. They put to end all foolishness. It was over. Following the Feast of Trumpets, there were what were called 10 days of awe, which led into the Day of Atonement. And in those 10 days of awe, God said, every person you ain't forgiven, you got 10 days to get it done. <laughs> said, every person you still see and want to cuss, you got 10 days to release that profanity. Not to them. <laughs> Because here's what God said. God said, how is this going to be better if you brought the same baggage? A lot of times people want to change of uh, scenery because they think it's going to change their scenario. You are the scenario, so scenery will only be a different place but the same you. So God says, immediately following the Feast of Trumpets, which we are in now, God said, 
I gave you 10 days of what are called awe, and I want you to do whatever repenting you need to do, to whoever you need to be repenting to. And, and literally, God said, and if you had been far from him, God said, you got this 10-day window to get back with me. Okay? Now, this is very, this is very important. Now, I know some people think, well, I've never heard of this before. I never, that's just it. That's why people just operated all kinds of crazy cycles in life because we broke from his calendar and went to our own. But we fixed in that. All right, so here's what happens on the Day of Atonement. I'm just going to give you some basic things. Uh, we fast. The Day of Atonement this year is actually on October uh, the uh, 4th. What's that first Saturday in uh, October? The 4th. So we're going to recognize it that Sunday, uh, but that Saturday we fast from uh, until sundown. Sundown means 6 p.m. Now, if you're like me, and that's the latest you can eat, I'm going to be at the restaurant at 6 <laughs> so the food can hit the table at 6.01. <laughs> now, now, watch this, Leviticus 23, 26. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, on exactly the tenth day of the seventh month is the day of atonement. Now, remember it says seventh month because remember there were four different starts to the year. And so the Bible is using one of the agricultural starts when it says seventh month. But seventh month here is the month of Tishri, which refers to uh, the first month of the civil year. Everybody got it? The whole concept God wanted to have was that he's always given fresh starts. That was the whole concept. Tenth day of the seventh month, which is uh, the date I just gave you, it shall be the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation. What's that? A meeting between God and man. You shall afflict your souls. Now, here's what that means. It means you fast. Afflict your souls is a Hebrew idiom. And you know why it says afflict your soul? Because when you're hungry, your soul is crazy. Your soul or your mind, your thoughts, your will, and your emotion. Some of you are just, I'm just so stressed out. Eat. Before you talk about, I just got a demon, maybe you're hungry. <laughs> fellas, listen, when you, when you fellas, when you're feeling real kind of like you almost on your, uh, <laughs> maybe you just need to have a sandwich. <laughs> so verse, here it is. So when it says afflict your souls, it literally means you shall fast. So you fast that Saturday, sun, sundown. Everybody got that? Okay, so that is that October the 4th. We fast from sunup to sundown, okay? Now, let me be clear what sunup means, because some people are going to tell you, well, you know, it was 345 when I had that sandwich, so. <laughs> From midnight on Friday till 6 p.m. on Saturday, you afflict your soul. Now, if you have medical conditions, you consult your medical doctor, Harvest Christian Center. Does that make any medical advice, nor does it make any guarantees or imply any of any kind? And then look what it says, an offer, an offering made by fire to the Lord. So on that first Sunday in October, October the 5th, the time I'm teaching this, October the 5th, that Sunday, we bring to the Lord a day of atonement offering. Why? He said to. And, and made by fire here, the Hebrew word there means a sacrifice. So in other words, God says, I want this one to hurt you. And not hurt in the sense like, you know, you ain't going to eat the rest of the week. Your lights shut off. Yeah. Not that. He says, I want you to feel that you gave it to me. He says, I need this. Because listen, because watch this. It's not equal giving. It's equal sacrifice. And what does that mean, Bishop? Because some people could give $1,000. That doesn't mean anything to them. Some people, $1,000, that's like some people, $50 could, could, could be a lot. You, you get what I'm point? The point is, is God says, I want it to hurt. And by hurt, he just means, I want you to notice you gave it to me. I want the bank account numbers to look different after you did this. Not just the after, everything after the comma. I want the before the comma to look different. And so in Hebrew, it just means a sacrifice. Say sacrifice. So he tells us what to do. He says, make sure you're in church. That is a day where you cannot miss it. Why? He said, it's a holy meeting. Come to church. <laughs> and then he says, you should afflict your soul. You should fast. And then he said, I want something that's going to hurt you. Sacrifice. And not hurt you. And again, let me be clear. Not, you know, well, you know, this is where we was going to go eat, but ain't nothing at the house. And so, you know, okay. Now, if you are moved to do that, that's great. And you can go to the bank and let the Lord, you know, you can do all that. What I'm saying is, as God says, is it needs to be a sacrifice. And if you don't feel it, it's not a sacrifice. Doesn't ever say, I need to feel it. Why? That's what the Bible says. You've got a problem, take it up with God. Verse 28, 
you shall not do uh, any work on this same day for it is a day of atonement to make atonement on your behalf before the Lord your God. If there's any person, now watch what God says about this day. If there is any person who will not humble himself on this day, he shall be cut off from his people. As, as for any person who does any work on this same day, that person I will destroy from among his people. You shall do no work at all. Now, let me, let me translate this for you so you can understand and leave that up. Go back to the previous verse, please. And any person who does any work on that same day, that person I will destroy from among his people. What God's point was, was that uh, because they were limited, the Hebrews could only have a Sabbath, which was one day. Got it? In Jesus Christ, he is the Sabbath. Sabbath just means rest. Rest implies shalom. So in other words, he's saying, I need you to make sure that on this day that you're focused totally on me. Everybody get that? Okay. Be, be, because the ritualistic application there wouldn't be applicable because we got it better than the Jews do. All right. Verse 31. Um, you shall do no work at all. Now, let's read that next part. It is to be a perpetual statute forever. <laughs> now, you know what forever means in Hebrew? Forever. <laughs> Throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Verse 32, it is to be a Sabbath of complete rest to you. So now that you understand what I, what I just taught you. Okay, so Jesus is that rest. He is the Sabbath. We, we, he didn't. God rebuked them by giving them one day. Hebrews teaches us that God said, I'm restricting you to a day. For those who believe in Jesus Christ, every day is that day. From even in the evening, you used to celebrate your Sabbath. Or you used to celebrate your rest. Everybody understand that? All right. And then here was the last fall one. And then we're going to go back to trumpets where we're at. And then we're gonna, you're going to understand why you got food with you in the auditorium. Now, please don't let that be uh, an indication for you to be bringing sandwiches and snacks. <laughs> well, Bishop did it on Wednesday because it's a feast. And I'll explain to you in a minute. All right, the last one was the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, some years ago, and, 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 and um, it is not currently scheduled to be done that way this year, but we will probably do it at, at some point soon. Some years ago, we used to do our, we used to call it, y'all remember camp meeting for those of you that have been here a little time? And then we called it the Harvest Conference, and, and then, uh, then it was taken over. I think it started as the taking over conference, then it was a camp meeting and all that. We always scheduled that during the same week because it was the feast, it was the week of this feast. And if you, for those of you that were there, just by your shouting, would you indicate the level of the presence of God that we experienced during those meetings? Now, that was a while ago that we used to do it that way. We haven't done it, I think, in, in three or four years. But literally, Friday night. <laughs> Some of y'all remember that Friday night, everybody's on the floor. <laughs> From the window <laughs> to the wall. The Lord sure did fall. Yes, he did. I mean, it was the, I mean, it was, y'all remember that? It was just thick. I mean, literally. I mean, and then uh, Bishop Bright and I, we tag team on Friday. I mean, it, just, it was just, that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. <laughs> uh, it, it just powerful. Po I mean, just. You just had to be there when we used to do it that way. We did it that way because of this feast. Let me explain this to you. It's this Feast of Tabernacles. Say Feast, feast. of Tabernacles. Tabernacles. In the Bible, it's also called the Feast of Booths. It's also called the Feast of Ingathering. It's also called the Feast of our, uh, of our uh, uh, predecessor as it relates to the name, the Feast of the Final Harvest, and the Feast of Sukkot, S-U-K-K-O-T. Some Bible translations t change the K's into C's, S-U-C-C-O-T-H. Now, here's what this feast means. It means literally tabernacles where the Lord would dwell amongst his people. That's why when we would have, and, and we, let me say, maybe we can do it like that next year. I got seven amens. Never mind. Because it's not scheduled to be done that way this year. Now, Lord, if you want me to do that, he'll tell me. He ain't told me yet. So we ain't doing it. <laughs> but now, maybe next year we'll do that. It literally means the reason the presence of God would be so strong in those gatherings is because literally God said, I set an appointment where I come and dwell with you. So imagine, watch this, imagine God coming and hanging out at your house. Not as your equal. 
No, 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 no. He, no, he's God. You don't know what's up. God? No, 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 no. He's a sir, son. He's a sir. <laughs> he ain't your buddy. Why does the scripture say he calls me friend? Friend means he treats you as if he loves you like a friend. In other words, in other words, what he's saying is, I'm not gonna watch this. Uh, the scripture says that because some people get really. Oh, Jesus is my friend. And, and that's not to say he doesn't love you, but sometimes you can look at him as an equal, which is why you'll pray to him with an attitude. Because you think he's your homeboy or your homegirl or your BFF. When the scripture says friend, it just means that God dwelt with, dealt with the people as if he cared with the compassion of a friend. That's what that means. So even when we sing the saying, I'm a friend to God, but you ain't heard lately. But <laughs> when we do sing it, it's not, oh, Jesus is my friend. We went to the movies the other day. I mean, now, he is your friend in the sense that he loves you with the compassion that a friend would have. So the scripture says, no greater love than a man has to lay down his life for a friend, one that he loves. Does this make sense? All right, it's just important that we understand that because if you begin to bring God down to your level and make him in your image, you'll start to treat him like he's your equal. And, and that's just that you don't want to do that. All right, now, watch this. Uh, it was the Lord dwelling with us. Now, what literally happened is when the children of Israel, they came out of Egypt, and they were in um, the wilderness, and they were going to their promised land, they would, they would have these tent cities that they would make, these tabernacles that they'd build. And what would happen is that tabernacle would be the place where they would have to conduct their lives. So what would happen is God would say, I'll come meet with you in your tabernacle. So the Feast of Tabernacles. So let me give you an example of what happens. And we will recognize this, just, just not with camp meeting. We'll do this because this begins a, a few couple of weeks after the Day of Atonement. Zechariah 14, 16. Y'all all right tonight? Yeah. All right, good. I'm just giving you the background, and then we're going to get to Feast of Trumpets. And, and if, you, if you got in a little after I began, you got to get the CD tonight because um, I set the stage for what we're, what we're doing and where we're going. All right, Zechariah chapter number, where I tell you go? 14. All right, get to verse number 16. And a matter of fact, I want you to read it. One, two, ready, read. Keep going. So watch this. The, the Feast of Tabernacles was when God made judgment concerning rain for your life. All right? So God says, you can choose not to honor me. I just don't ask me to do nothing. All right? Verse 18. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague, which the Lord strikes the nations who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So I'll teach you more about that as we go. So the, the three fall ones, the first one was Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets. second one was Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. The third one? All right, now let's go back to where we are today, which is the Feast of Trumpets. For my note takers, I hope I didn't get you too disoriented, but I wanted us to end with where we are today. All right, now watch this. What would happen on Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets, watch this, is that the ram's horn would be blown. Now, uh, blowing, which was called a shofar, say shofar. shofar. Blowing the shofar in the Hebrew culture was a very distinct sound. It was only used when there was a very an important announcement that needed to be made to the people. Literally, the people, they could be doing whatever they were doing. But if they heard the shofar, they dropped what they were doing, and they came, and they came, watch this, in order to hear the message. So in other words, the disorder that was in the environment and in the atmosphere immediately had to end because the ram's horn was an announcement. Something very important is getting to be said. How do we know it's important? Because they alerted everybody. If it was something that was uh, of a menial nature, they could have simply went to the individual and sent a message by way of an individual to another individual. They didn't do that. They would blow the shofar. So shofar declared that order had to come. Say, order, order. is coming. In my, life. in my life. You know what disease is? Disorder. Something's out of order. You know what mental sickness is? Disorder. 
Something's out of order. You know what lacking your finances is? Disorder. Something's out of order. Because when the order of God is there, you have more than enough. The scripture says, and he makes my cup run over. So if you got lack in your finances, that's because something is out of order. But the good news is you at church on the right night at the right time. Because your God, 5,775 years ago, he said, I'm setting up a meeting with y'all. And the meeting is, you didn't call it with me. I called it with you. And the meeting is, the ram's horn. Whatever is out of order, I'm announcing to you, it is coming in to I said it is coming in to order. Watch this. Watch, watch this. Watch, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Yeah, the, the, the Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, uh, is called the Day of Judgment. Because on this day, the trajectory of the next year, he decides on. This is why I wish the week, this weekend they really would have heard me, but that's all right, because <laughs> your year. And for those that are watching online, your year. Literally, it was the day where judgment was issued concerning the next year. Essentially, God pulled the records and said, who's here? Who put me first? Who loves me? Who fought through the traffic? Who didn't care if they, who, 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 who brushed those tears back? Who, who, who let go of that depression? Who, 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 who said, I will not be stopped from putting my God for, bring up the records because I'm going to make some judgments. Now, no, no, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Literally, the trajectory of the new year was set. Now, there were 10 days of awe, as I told you, following the Feast of Trumpets leading into the Day of Atonement. Now, during this time, it was to be a time of prayer. Everybody say prayer. So in just a moment, we're going to pray. And again, if you were not here at the very beginning of the teaching, please, please, please get the CD. If you've been here for the whole thing, please, please, please get the CD. It's for your own good. Uh, consecration. Say consecration. Consecration. Uh, consecration means setting oneself apart. All right. So this, th these next 10 days is not the time for you to have a bunch of casual conversations with everybody. And, and please understand, this is going to be the time where the past is going to try to call. So don't be shocked if the past calls and tries to show up. All right? Watch this. Watch this. Because, uh, because judgment is being made. So if you can get distracted with some stuff from this previous year. All right? And it was a time that we already discussed the Day of Atonement, of fasting, which you'll do uh, that Day of Atonement. And there was also a time of repentance, which we've already talked about. Repenting means to turn from, change your mind. See, I changed my mind. See, a lot of times folk think repentance, they just think of sin, you know, so if you, you do this, you know, repent, stop doing that. And that's one level of it. But repentance is really about changing your mind. You, you know what? The, the scripture says it's going to be difficult for you to sin against somebody you love. You know how folk fight one another? Be, 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 because they, they don't actually love one another. Now, you know why they don't love one another? Because they don't love themselves. Jesus says, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself, which means, watch this, you can't give somebody what you don't give you. So when we talk about repentance, it's literally changing your mind. Jesus, his first message was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom is at hand. What was he saying? Jesus was saying, change your mind. He said, the way y'all been thinking is jacked up. He said, change your mind. You ever met somebody, especially as you've been coming to Harvest for a while, and your thinking is changing, your mind is changing, and then you talk to them, and, and you're like, yo, you what? <laughs> it, come on. And, and, you, and, and you're like, we used to be real cool, but now your, your mind is jacked up, and I'm... We used to be best friends, and I used to want to go everywhere with you. Now I can't even stand you because your mind is jacked up. And you sit here talking about this little yin-yang, whack-whack stuff over here. Man, I'm trying to do something with my life. I ain't been through all the hell I've been through to just sit up and pay bills and die. I'm trying to do something with my life. I'm the head and not the tail, and you sitting here happy being the tail. Jesus said, he said, he, he said, your mind is jacked up. Please understand. Please understand. When there's a clashing of the mind, somebody wins. When there's a clashing of the mind, somebody is going to prevail. Now, you just need to ensure that it is the mind of Christ that is in you that prevails. 
Because you start telling me, oh, you just going to church. Yeah, I don't believe in all that. I believe I can have a private relationship. But you can believe what you want to believe. That ain't what the Bible says. <laughs> I don't have to believe in, in gravity. Get up on this building after you sign that waiver. <laughs> Actually, go down to the next one and jump off that one. And jump. You don't have to believe in Your belief in something does not invalidate or, 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 or validate it. Just like people, see, some of y'all getting on message, so-and-so don't like me. They're not liking of you <laughs> does not invalidate or validate you. So when people have a problem with you, message, that's their problem with you. That ain't my problem with me. Got it? All right, now, now, now watch this. Watch this. Say, change my mind. During this Feast of Trumpets, God said, I want you to change your mind about some stuff. I want you to change your mind to thinking it has to be a struggle all the time. You've been fighting all your life. And I'm not saying you ain't you fight, you're going to stop fighting. I'm just saying you've been fighting the same fight. You ought to get to a point in yourself where you just, you, you ever, you ever, I think, I, I say this often but because i got to keep this alive in you. you. You ever just got to the place to where you sick and tired? Of being sick and tired. Watch this. You don't even know what you're sick and tired about no more. You're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're like, I don't even really know what the problem is. I just know I'm mad that I'm mad at the problem. I don't even remember what it is anymore. Sometimes, please understand, and this is why the pressure that's been on you for the last few weeks, I'm talking to somebody, that, that, that pressure is because God says, I'm trying to push you to where you'll change your mind. And you're either going to change when you learn enough that you want to or you heard enough that you have to. So I'm trying to give you the expedited class so that you don't have to go through another class called pain. Because I don't know about you, but I'm, listen, baby, it's enough pain on the schedule to where I don't need to add no additional pain. Pain teaches you what lessons would not. Somebody tell you all day long that so-and-so ain't good for you, so-and-so ain't good for you, so-and-so ain't good for you. Okay, until they cheat you, beat you up, knock you out, then you'll get it. You was right. People tell me, Bishop, just tell me what's going on here. Just tell me what's going on. I said, well, for what? You don't really want to listen? Now, some people got hip to the game, and they're like, no, Bishop, tell me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, A, B, C. My season is shifting, Bishop. I just think the Lord is. <laughs> so I just like, go through pain then. Pain will teach you. Pain will do what you won't allow your pastor to do. Move on for a minute. Numbers 29.1. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation. Now remember, this is talking the agricultural day. So first day of the month or the seventh month is really the first day of the civil year, which is Rosh Hashanah. Everybody got it? All right, all right, all right, all right. So, you should have a holy convocation. What are we doing tonight? Having a holy convocation. You should do no customary work. For you, it is a day of the blowing of the trumpets or the shofar. So, we've obeyed the first part of the instruction, right? He said, on this day, you shall come to church. Well, we obeyed that part. All right, now let me show you some more. And then, then we're going to shout, and then you're going to understand what this apple and honey is about. Uh, Leviticus 23, 24. Leviticus 23, 24. Y'all still with me, Harvest? All right, come on, we got to move. Uh, here it is, verse. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, Tishri, on the first day, which is just started in, at sundown. All right. You shall have a Sabbath rest. Now, remember, when we see that in Scripture, it's for us, it's referring to what? Jesus. A memorial of blowing of trumpets, ram's horn, so far, a holy convocation. Now, in other words, look, 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 look at it again. You shall have a Sabbath rest. In other words, he says, I need you tonight to be reminded that you are resting in me. And everything you're trying to set up and figure out and calculate, that's good. But just get your I am back. Because 
over the last year, you lost your I am. Bishop, what do you mean I lost my I am? He said to Moses, can I preach now? He said to Moses, he said, Moses, uh, Moses asked the Lord, he said, Lord, who shall I say sent him? We don't know your name. We just know that we worship you, but you are the God with no name. So God says, I'll tell you what my name is. My name is I am, which means everything that you say with following the words I am is as if God himself is saying it. So some of you over the last year, because life has been coming at you every day, you lost your I am. You lost your won't he make a way you lost your God is you lost your God is able because you started looking at your ability God says tonight I need you to be reminded that I am the God of the impossible I am the God of the supernatural I am the God that can take one up and put another down and I need somebody in here to get your I am packed but, but I I, God says, I need you to rest in me how you used to rest in me. You didn't used to be stressed out like that. You didn't used to cry about what you're crying about now. Get your I am back. Somebody shout I am. He said, I need you to remember I made you, not you yourself. You didn't get yourself that job. You ain't that qualified. It ain't because of who you knew. It was because I decided to favor you. And what God opens up door for you, no man can shut that door. I wish you'd shout out, I am. I am. See that he says, I need you to get your I am back said, I need you to remember that you're rested in me. And as long as you're trying to figure it out in your own strength and with your own ability, that's why it looks so hard. Because you're sitting up here trying to connive and calculate. And God said, get your Sabbath back. Get your rest in me back. Get, remember, remember when you didn't really know you weren't let learn. You, and so you used to just say, I'm trusting God. You didn't even really know what you meant, but you said it. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me tonight. I'm almost through. Watch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor. He's getting ready to close. Yes, sir. Uh, watch this. Remember we used to say stuff like, well, the Lord's going to do it. Which is really your way of saying, I have no earthly clue or idea. It don't make no sense from the rooter to the tutor. I can't understand this, but I know that I serve a God that if he can raise himself up from the dead, if he can open the eyes of the blind, if he can make the deaf to hear and the lame to speak, I know my little issue ain't nothing for the great I am. What's this? He said, what's this? He said, you have to have a rest in me. Verse 25, you shall do no customary work on it and you shall offer. Look what he asked for again. What's he asked for? Huh? So he said, I want one on atonement that you feel. And I want one on trumpets. Watch this and I. That you feel. Look, made by fire. Sacrifice. Like, this is the Lord so like offerings. No, he likes you. And until he gets your money, he doesn't have you. God don't need your $400. Please, please don't flatter yourself. <laughs> He's not in need. Heaven ain't broke. God is so good that if Harvest has a need, the Lord will just call somebody, anybody. Don't, don't flatter. Let's not flatter ourselves like we're doing the Lord a favor and I help the church out. Baby, please understand, God does not need anything from you. He wants you. Somebody asks for offerings, it's not because the Lord is like, man, I really need that extra 200. Get this new internet thing going. I really, I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need that 200 from you. Now go and break it off. Break it off. <laughs> Jesus said, "Wherever your treasure is, there your heart is also. Heart, cardia, mind. Wherever your mind is, got it. When, and let me tell you something. When you struggle with giving to the Lord, that's your indication He doesn't have you. So when you get, when you come to church, and at all of I just preach, uh, it may be somebody in here, and I rebuke it if it is, who thought, you see, he's just talking about money. See, that, that means you, God doesn't have you." Because you're struggling with giving him something when he didn't struggle not once when it came to giving his life for you. Now, let me help you understand something. If you got friends who, the truth be told, they can let you hold 20. All right, let me leave that alone. No, leave it alone. Yes, sir. 
in music just means stop. <laughs> now, let me, let me give you this. Can I give you this last piece? I thought I was at Harvest. That's right. I had to been reintroduce myself, lady. Hi, everybody. I'm Bishop Foreman. I'm your pastor. So good to meet you. Now, I remember you may have met the former me, Big Bishop. We took him out back and killed him. <laughs> so maybe you don't know this me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> good to meet you. Thank God for you. All right. Y'all want to hear the rest of this? All right, here it is. Say Feast of Trumpets. Here it is. Watch this. Uh, the Feast of Trumpets normally occurs at the new moon. <laughs> All right, uh, okay. I, I thought y'all wanted some revelation. but <laughs> Only the slightest crescent can be visible. Watch this. However, throughout this feast, clouds could obscure the moon, and witnesses were required which means you had to be watchful to know that the feast had begun. So the rabbis later added, the Jewish teachers, a second day to this feast to make sure the people didn't miss it. Watch this. This need for watchfulness and preparedness in connection with the Feast of Trumpets is echoed and re-echoed throughout the New Testament in connection, watch this, with the Lord's return to the earth. You, can, I, can I take you here? Because you got people talking about, oh, it's wars and rumors of wars and these last and evil days. Okay, listen. Peter was preaching last days, so you need to come up with something new to preach. Okay, the last days. Peter said, we don't know the day nor the hour, but we do know the feast. We don't know the day or the hour the Lord is going to crack the sky, but we do know the feast he's going to crack the sky. Trumpets. Okay, let me, let me, yeah, no, 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 watch this. Listen to this again. The need for watchfulness and preparedness in connection with the Feast of Trumpets is echoed and re echoed throughout the New Testament in connection with the Lord's coming. Matthew 24, 42. There's several verses I can show you. I just want to show you one verse. I want you to see this because, in essence, the, the essence of it was that if, if you slept on it or you weren't watching for it, you'd miss it. Matthew 24, 42, verse. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Now, you remember the scripture when it would talk about, I won't go to the verses for the sake of brevity and the sake of time. But the scripture would say, in that day, two will be in the field and one will, one will come. One will. Remember that? You're talking about that. And people said, oh, 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 you got to just stay out of sin because you might be in sin. You might be drinking that liquor when the Lord comes back and he's going to leave you. <laughs> Some of y'all remember that? Come on, you, if you came up in church and told you that. All right. <laughs> you know, okay. Here's the deal. They, 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 they weren't necessarily completely uh, inaccurate. <laughs> they were just incomplete. Here's what would happen. The Feast of Trumpets is believed in Midrash by the Jews that this would be the trumpet or this, the, the feast rather when the Lord will return. Bishop, why are you telling us this? Because I'm going to tie it back around and we're going to shout and make it a, put a nice bow on it. Watch this. When the scripture would say one would be taken, one would not, it's because one would see that the time changed and respond to the call of the shofar while one would not. Matthew 24, 40, here it is. Two, uh, then two men be in the field, won't be taking the other left. Well, how is this so? Because when the Lord, watch this, let's connect it. When the Lord would set his appointment called a feast, one would honor it. And the other would think it ain't no big deal to not be here. So what he would say is, is that, watch this, what he would say is, is that one would be taken, one would, one would remain, uh, one would be called up, one would not, so on and so forth. Watch this, why would he say that? He said that because, uh, no, I do not want to do a second CD. He said that because, watch this, touch your name, so you got to get it. And I'm not doing no second one. <laughs> watch this, be seated, I'm almost through. He said this because if the people were not paying attention to the feast, and if the people were not paying attention to the shofar, being blown and if the people were not paying attention to the fact that the moon was new I don't even have time to go there if they weren't paying attention they'd miss watch this the moment of judgment okay now if you're like huh 
I, I taught on it a lot before, so just to get some of the previous teachings, I taught on it a lot before. Here's what I'm trying to get you to see. Say, say, say this. Say, tonight, tonight. It, is it is my night. My night. Watch this. You kept the holy convocation. <laughs> the Lord said, I had this on the calendar for the last several thousand years. So harvest, God says, I wanted to come to the appointment. And God says, I'm so glad to see you at the appointment because I'm about to make judgment concerning the rest of your year. So, Bishop, why do we have this? Hebrews around the world right now are doing what we're about to do. Now, this you didn't see in the scripture. This came from rabbinical midrash and discussions and things. What, the, what would happen is the rabbis read the word, and then they would translate it into doctrine. They'd make um, doctrine or rules and regulations predicated upon the word. Jews around the world tonight have honey, and that's what's at the bottom of this, and, and they have apples. Now, you know why? Because what Jews are doing is, is what we're getting ready to do in just a moment. Don't do it yet because don't get that honey all on them seats. <laughs> I started just eat it up here and say, see, now go home and do it yourself. But I wanted everybody to be able to put it in it. Don't get no honey on them seats. You stain it, you buy it. No, I'm, I'm just being facetious. I'm just joking. You know why they're doing this? Because they know that tonight, Yahweh. The name. They call him the name because they won't utter his name in vain. Tetragrammaton, they use a hand signal, the name. They know that tonight he's making judgment on all their, watch this, enemies. And he's making judgment concerning their year. So you know why they have honey in an apple? Because they're declaring naturally what they expect to experience So you know what they're saying tonight? Lachaim, which is to life, which means it's going to be a sweet year. <laughs> if you can't get with that, you don't speak the king's English, and it's cool. Tonight they're saying our king is making judgment in our favor, and this year, I don't care what happened last year. I don't care what I cried about. I don't care what I was bitter about last year. But this year, somebody shout, this year, it's going to be sweet. Bishop, I've declared it before, but you didn't keep the feast before. Around the world, they are declaring it's going to be a sweet year. You know why? I'm out of time, so y'all go ahead and stop here. Everybody stand real quick. Uh, do, you, do you know why Israel isn't really worried about all the enemies they have? You know, they got a lot of enemies. They got Al-Qaeda. They got ISIS. Where'd she come from? I mean, she's brand new. Like, where was she when we were fighting the other war? Couldn't we have got them at the same time? Somebody else that they announced, some other new group. In, in, some of the, you know why Israel's like, oh, really? Now, Israel's in rebellion. They're in rebellion because Messiah has come and they're rejecting him. But you know why they're not really worried? They're not worried because they know that tonight was coming. And they knew that tonight they were going to hold their holy convocation. And in fact, the rabbis extended it through Friday. They, they were going to have their holy convocation and they knew that tonight they were going to tell every enemy, oh, you don't like us? Oh, you're going to bomb us? Oh, really? No. It's going to be sweet to us. Oh, you're going to take the car, huh? Oh, really? I'll get a better one. Y'all ain't getting it. 
Oh, you don't love me no more? Don't threaten me with a good time. This the other one kind of slippery. <laughs> Doctor says, we don't know what we're going to do. Oh, really? Oh. I'm going to smack now. I'm going to know it's going to go to people. Oh, really? You don't know what that means on the report? Oh, really? Oh, um, okay. Don't have enough money to make it to the end of the month? Oh, really? Because your God and your king is making judgment tonight about this next 12 months. So if I was you, I'd take your cup. And if you're watching online or Roku or one of the sites, go get you some apples and some honey. You ain't got apples and honey, just go on and uh, rig it up real quick and get you some Nabisco crackers and some syrup. <laughs> get you some great, get you some. Now watch this. Don't, don't do it yet because I'm going to bless it. Father, in the name that is above every name, we've honored your word tonight. We have kept the holy convocation. And, Father, we are going to offer you an offering in a moment. But, Father, tonight we declare that judgment is made in our favor concerning this year. And I declare that this year, 5775, that we just stepped into a couple of years ago, a couple of hours ago, that this year would be a sweet year for your people that have honored your word. Whatever made them bitter last year, gone in the name of Jesus. Whatever sicknesses or illness that tried to come against them, gone in the name of Jesus. Whatever lack tried to come into their lives, gone in the name of Jesus. Judgment is made in the favor of your people concerning this year. And I bless now this apple and this honey just as a symbol of what your people around the world are doing. Saying it's going to be sweet. Now you say this, say in the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare that this year, that this, year this spiritual year, this spiritual which just started, just started is going to be a sweet year. I will look at every tough circumstance and remind myself of what I'm getting ready to do. I'm doing it in the natural, so it's sealed in the spirit. Sweet year. Sweet year. Unexpected breakthroughs. Unexpected increase. Unexpected favor. Yes, sir. Say it just like that. Yes, sir. This is a Kairos moment. Heaven is invading earth now. Now, while you're eating, they're going to play the ram's horn again while you're eating. And you just eat. Now, I want you to think about, think about every, all the hell over these last 12 months. And just know that this is going to be sweet. While you're doing that, they're going to play the ram's horn while you're eating. Go on and, 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 and eat and receive that. And declare it's going to be sweet. Now, let's not eat it because you're trying to have me eat and get you a sandwich. All this here. This ain't no meal. This is symbolic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, ram's horn. Amen. <laughs>
Sweet year. 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 Come on and give your God praise all in this place tonight. Let it continue to play. Give your God praise all in this place tonight. Come on, lift up your voice like a shofar tonight. Do it. I said do it. We are honoring your word. We are honoring your word. your great, 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 great somebody up. You're getting ready to possess everything they were supposed to possess. You're getting ready to walk in at in your life. Order's coming. Order's coming. Order's coming. Order's coming. Order's coming. coming. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you tonight. We bless you. We've kept your word. He said that this would be an everlasting holy convocation. It is a meeting between us and you. So we honor you tonight. Say, we honor you tonight, Jesus. Say, you are first. Say, forgive me forever taking you out of that place. Nothing I'm doing is more important than you and putting you first. And that means that I make what's important to you important to me. I repent change my mind hear me with your heads bowed and eyes closed hear me tonight on this day that the Lord makes judgment concerning this next year there were 10 days following this that these days of awe that I've talked to you about already tonight where God says I want you to repent and return repent and return and so tonight, somebody, you can do that tonight. You can repent. And that repentance is not just with the Lord. It's with people that you have dishonored that were due honor. And it's repentance, changing your mind. But tonight, if you're in this place, and you're watching me at any of our different sites and campuses tonight, tonight, if you need to come to Jesus Christ for the very first time and become a Christian, when you didn't even know you needed a Savior, he was there saving you. When you didn't know you needed protection, he was there protecting you. We didn't, you. When you didn't even know you needed your mind to be regulated, he was there regulating it. When you didn't even know you had illness, he blocked it. And the scripture says that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive you. So tonight, if you need to become a Christian for the first time, start this new spiritual year off right. Come to the Lord. Secondly, if you've given your life to Jesus before, but you've not been faithful in serving him, return. Repent. Bishop, how could both of them be repenting? Well, it's very simple. Before you got here, you were with him. And when you got a body, you forgot him. So it says we're born in sin, saved in iniquity. Tonight, if you've fallen away from God, and here's the deal. You could even be in church and still have fallen away because your body's here, but your actions are far from it. 
Jesus said, many people would say in that day, Lord, Lord, Lord. And he said, their mouths were real close to me, but their hearts, their minds weren't. Let's be honest. We've all done it. So I'm not beating nobody up. We've all done it. We've all dipped out on God, hoping that he wouldn't see our absence, not realizing that he leaves the 99 to go to the one. Because he's paid a price for us. So tonight, start your teshuvah. And the first two calls I'm going to make is if you need to give your life to Jesus Christ for the first time, become a Christian. He died for your sins so you get an abundant life. 2,000 years ago, God stepped in a body and that body was crucified so it washed away every sin. But secondly, if you need to come back to the Lord and begin to serve him faithfully again, tonight that opportunity exists for you. If either one of those is you, I'm not going to ask you to come down. I'm not going to embarrass you. But start your teshuvah tonight. Change your mind tonight. Change your mind tonight. Change your mind tonight. Because over these next 10 days, God says, I solidify what I, de what I de decreed and declared tonight. But God says, if you don't return, if you don't repent, you can forget it. If you don't turn, change your mind, you can forget it. Don't miss this moment of your life. You've been waiting your whole life to get it. If you need to become a Christian for the first time, rededicate yourself to Jesus. He loves you. He's not mad at you. I said, he's not mad at you. He's not giving up on you yet. And he won't. I'm here to tell you, he won't give up on you. But you got to maximize your moment. It's a meeting with God and you. If either one of those is you, on the count of three, wherever you're at, here at the Royal Campus or any of our other sites, on the count of three, I want you to throw that head up. One, two, three. If that's you, throw it up. Throw it up. Throw it up. I see you. 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 Oh, come on, Harvest. You can bless God better than that. Now, I want every hand lifted in this place. I want everybody to say to me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess my sins before you. Thank you for dying in my place. Because of that belief and because of that confession, if this is my first time praying this, I am a Christian. If I was far from you, I am connected to you. Forgive me. Today, I agree with you. It's going to be a sweet year. Whatever wrongs I need to write, give me the grace to write them. I will end all feuds. I will end all disputes. In Jesus' name. Harvest, would you give God the best praise you can give him? Hallelujah. Now listen, if you just prayed that prayer for the first time and rededicated yourself to Jesus, I want you to take out your mobile phone and I want you to text the word decision to the phone number 59769. Decision to the number 59769. And when you do that, we're going to send you a text message right away to help you serve Jesus faithfully. One more thing I want to do before I have you take your seats. Are you glad you came to church tonight? I, 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 want, I want to remind us of what the scripture said, and I, I'm not going to give any specific amount or anything like that, but the scripture says God said a holy convocation. That's what we, we're here. Say, I'm here. I'm here. And, 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 then, and then he said, I want you to rest in me. Say, my I am is back. All right, so here's what I want you to do. Right where you're at, lay your hands on yourself. You know, give me two more minutes. And I need to say something, too. I, I don't want people, when I, when I ask everybody to stand and all that, I do not want a bunch of people leaving and exiting and disrupting the flow of the Holy Ghost. All right, so if you got to leave, you need to, you need to just find that time to leave. But do not do that anymore. This, that disrupts the flow of the Holy Spirit. And when you're moving around when people are trying to receive from the Lord, that's not what we're going to do anymore. Do we understand each other? Yes, Amen. Lay your hands to yourself. Say, I am, I am favored. favored. I am, I am blessed. blessed. I am, I am the, head the head and not the tail. Not the tail. I, am I am above, above and, not and not beneath. I am. I totally rest and trust my God. My God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could ask or think. I agree with I am. I rest in him. He is my source. He pays, he pays my bills. Amen. 
He favors me. I'm irresistible to my enemies. <laughs> I am. Hallelujah. The third thing he said, Leviticus 23, 27, he said, bring him an offering made by fire. I'm not going to have you bring it to the altar. I just want to remind you what the scripture says. He says, do something that's a sacrifice. Whatever that is for you, you do it. We're going to receive it in a moment. I'm not giving you an amount. Whatever the sacrifice for you is a sacrifice for you. If you don't want to give, you, 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 do, you do whatever it is you want to do. It's my responsibility to tell you what he told you to do. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a sweet year. Millionaires are going to rise up out of this congregation. Politicians are going to rise up out of this congregation. World changers and history makers are going to rise up out of this house. People whose assignment is to do the work of the Lord, their vocation and their occupation are going to walk in what God has ordained. It's going to be a sweet year. We've waited our whole lives to get to 5775. It's going to be a sweet year. Amen. Hug two or three people as you take your seats. Then don't, don't drop your honey and don't, don't knock your honey down. Matter of fact, uh, welcome team, y'all take these honey cups. Take the honey cups. Amen. Hug your neighbor on your left and right, and the welcome team is going to take your honey cup, and let's see what's going on at your campus this week. Amen.